Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Embellishing job applications is a well-honed skill. At the stroke of a pen, two months as an intern becomes four months in a junior position. Being in charge of paper clips is demonstrating leadership. The assistant to the regional manager becomes the assistant regional manager. But no matter how commonplace this exaggeration is, few of us go full Don Draper of makeup things about who we actually are. Meet Raquel Evita Saraswati. Who? Sir Swati is a Chief Equity, Inclusion, and Culture Officer at Philadelphia-based American Friends Service Committee, or the AFSC, a Quaker organization that fights globally for peace and social justice. Her qualifications for the role are impressive. Not only does Sir Swati have the academic credentials and training required, but she has all the important extras. Sir Swati is of Latino, South Asian, and Arab descent. The human resources consultant involved in her recruitment, Oscar Pierre Castro describes her as, quote, a queer Muslim multi-ethnic woman, unquote. What's more, Saraswati, an activist, is a public voice for moderate Muslims used to campaign in challenging media appearances. She was a bronze-hued New Jersey-born spokesperson for the Muslim and LGBTQ causes in fashionable hijabs, an advisor and confidant of local nonprofits. The Philadelphia Now chapter named her Woman of the Year. Local awards ceremony Rad Girls declared her Rad Girl of the Year. She served on the city's mayor's commission on LGBT affairs. Saraswati had also served as a commentator about Muslim extremism for conservative news outlets, including Fox News and Newsmax. She spoke about the difficulties Muslim women face in a documentary by a media company, Clarion Project, listed in 2020 as an anti-Muslim group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. The problem is the alleged Muslim progressive act activist was pretending to be a person of color and has been citing her fabricated Arab Latin heritage for almost two decades. Members of the American Friends Service Committee raised alarms when the woman holding a leadership position within that organization misrepresented her ethnic background for years and who they fear may be working on behalf of groups seeking to undermine their organization. The 39-year-old, whose real name is Rachel Elizabeth Seidel, by the way, she most likely changed it to Raquel because it sounds more Latinized, said in a 2004 article on Boston.com about her upcoming wedding that she and her then girlfriend Anne Dow Colby have been together for nine months while they were confident they want to marry they also want to take time to plan something res with respects to Seidel's fake mind you <laughs> I'm adding that in is that a quote Arab and Latin traditions and the 33 year old Colby's Vietnamese traditions we want to do something special not about the hype and not about the media. Her mom, Carol Peroni, has denied her claims about her heritage, saying that the family is, and I'm quoting, white as driven snow. Her mom also says, I call her Rachel. What? I don't know why she's doing what she's doing. I'm as white as driven snow and so is she. I'm German and British and her father was Calabrese Italian. She's chosen to live a lie. And I find that very, very sad, her mom said. Her mother also provided photos to the intercept of Saraswati, AKA Seidel, as a child. In the photos, which her mother asked not to be published, Saraswati's complexion is significantly lighter than the bronze look in her more recent photos. Peroni, her mom, also noted that her daughter converted to Islam in high school, and at some point, she seemed to have felt the need to portray herself as having a different ethnic identity. There is a history of white people posing as persons of color or claiming ethnic backgrounds that they do not have. In 2015, a national controversy erupted following the revelation that Rachel Dolezal, a white woman, had for years posed as black before becoming the president of an NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington. Others have claimed roots they don't have. More recently, 
Republican George Santos of New York falsely claimed Jewish descent amongst a host of other lies. The concerns about Saraswati, aka Seidel, include that some of the AFSC members and supporters regard her as a possible hidden political plug. In an anonymous letter posted on Medium that The Intercept has confirmed is from the AFSC members, they noted that after 9-11, she appeared in conservative and Islamophobic spaces, including right-wing TV shows, where she was presented as a moderate Muslim critical of Islamic extremism. While a change of political views is not unheard of, Saraswati, aka Seidel, has not publicly addressed her work from those years, and much of it appears to have been scrubbed from the internet. So going back to her mother's statement that her daughter converted to Islam in high school, and at some point she felt the need to portray herself as having a different ethnic identity. We have said many times on this channel that if you're presenting Islam as some sort of ethnic group, that has consequences. Islam is not an ethnic group. Islam is the religion of truth and should be portrayed and respected as such. But what we have is a situation where Easterners come here and they present Islam as their ethnic identity. And this happened over 20 years ago, well over 20 years ago. If, she, if her daughter converted in high school, that means she converted sometime in the early 2000s or the late 90s. And if that's the case, then imagine the amount of people who are doing the same thing in our time, pretending to be Muslim, and then bolstering that claim with a fake ethnic identity. Going back in the day, speaks volumes because in those days, it would be near impossible to do something like this and get away with it. And quite honestly, I never really heard of this woman until recently, until I saw this article. However, with the rise of this Islamophobic rhetoric that a lot of these Muslim organizations are pushing now, it is no shock that someone like this can infiltrate the Muslim ranks, come in as a queer ethnic ethnic Muslim and, and quickly become a spokesperson for equality and diversity. Why? Because Muslims are the ones who are pushing the Islamophobia rhetoric, trying to get bones and biscuits from the government and jobs and diversity and social justice and equality and whatnot, fronting and pretending to be grassroots organizations. But really, all they're trying to do is build a career. So if you take the enemy's money, you have to follow the enemy's blueprint. There's an old saying, whoever pays the piper names the tune. And so what you haven't noticed is that with all of this talk of Islamophobia, what you're actually doing is censoring Muslims from being able to speak out against stuff like this in any coherent fashion because they will these enemies will just bulk you in with every other so-called marginalized group and in the quran and sunnah we already have a blueprint and how to deal with people hating islam it has nothing to do with going and begging the enemy to give us rights that is just ludicrous and when you start doing this islamophobia stuff something that you that up until today i have not even seen a definition of what islamophobia is these are the consequences now you have this progressive muslim pretending to be south asian arab lady on right-wing platforms speaking as a moderate muslim and in our times social media is absolutely rife and saturated with these types who are always pandering within the left-right paradigm and inviting Muslims to come and participate in the enemy's evil system. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump. <laughs> 